I'm Sean from WarfighterFabrication.com. I'm here with my buddy Frank. So we're going to teach you how to tick well. Most videos out there today are just people welding and they're giving you tips while you're watching them weld. That's not going to work. I'm going to teach you how to understand and learn to TIG weld. Some of the things you're going to need to learn how to TIG weld. You're going to need some practice metal. You can buy these 8 inch by 2 inch strips uh, for about $9 at Home Depot. You're going to need a welding helmet. You need gloves. You really should wear sleeves, not like in the TV shows. You need some filler rod and of course TIG weld. First thing you need to learn how to do is sharpen your tungsten correctly. The best way to do it is use a drill, a sander, or a diamond wheel on a Dremel. You want to get a long point on your tungsten for a little bit more ac accuracy and control with your arc. A shorter point will give you more penetration if you're welding on thicker metal. When you put your tungsten in your torch, you want it to stick out about a quarter inch. With this cup here, you could do a lot more than that, but I still keep it about a quarter inch. The TIG welder I'm using today is an AHP TIG 200X. It's got a max amps of 200 on 240 volts. When you get your TIG welder, put it on the max amps and leave it there. Don't set your voltage to the metal thickness that you're welding. The reason you turn your TIG welder to the max amps is because you're going to use a foot pedal. The foot pedal at max amps gives you way more play into controlling your heat. This is my buddy Nino. Nino just completed a six week welding course at school. So he's going to take this course and let's see how improved he can get. First thing I'm going to teach you is how to control your heat. In order to learn how to control your heat, you got to do it without filler first. So that's what I'm going to show you right now. What I'm doing is I'm getting the puddle to the spot the diameter of the tungsten and then I'm going to move across the plate and keep the puddle the same diameter all the way across the plate. Now as you weld, the plate's going to heat up and you're going to have to taper off on the pedal a little bit to make sure that you keep the same size weld. And when it's done, you should have a shiny weld bead run across. Alright, Nino's going to run a bead and see what he's learned in school. And at the end, we're going to have him run a bead on the same plate and see how much improvement he's got. So Nino is going to do the heat training. He's going to fill that entire plate with a weld bead the size of the tungsten without any filler. filler. So you get the same puddle you had before. And make sure it stays the same size when you add filler. Most new welders dip a million times a second. And that's not needed. The way you're going to do this is you're going to heat your puddle back here and you're going to dip into the front of the puddle. And then once you dip, you're going to move your tungsten to where you just dipped at. And then you're going to dip in the front of the puddle again. And repeat. Now Nino's going to add filler and fill the entire plate up. Now 
we're going to do joints. This joint is the easiest of all the joints, it's the butt weld. The reason, one of the main reasons you keep your TIG welder at max amps is when you go to tack. When you go to tack, all you do is go to full pedal for about a half a second. And it does a nice perfect tack. So now you're going to take the principles that you just learned doing the plates and you're going to use it on the butt weld. It's basically the same thing. Get a nice tight fit up and your weld will come out perfect. Now Nino's going to do his butt weld. This is a left joint. The left joint is basically a fillet weld but with just two pieces laying flat on top of each other. The way you're going to weld this is you're going to come at it with a 45 degree angle and you're going to point it directly at the joint. And you want to, once you start welding, you want to kind of favor the bottom piece so you don't burn away the top piece too fast. Then all you're going to do is you're going to move it down and try to keep it straight at that joint. Now Nino's doing his left joint. Basically the same as a lap joint, except the top is taller. You're going to come at it at a 45 degree angle and point it directly at the joint. This one's a corner joint. This is if you're making boxes. Right? This is basically just like a butt weld, so you want to keep it 90 degrees with a little bit of work angle and just go right down the joint. This video is all about getting the fundamentals to help you learn to take well. Nino only did one plate per. You should do as many plates as you possibly can to learn how to take well the best. Take well is all about practicing. But with Nino only doing one plate per and one joint per, we're going to see how he improved. Before and after, shake and bake. <laughs> yeah, it's way better. Right. There it is. Tick well looks pretty easy once you get the fundamentals down. Nino had six weeks of training in a school and one hour of training 
drastically improved his wells. Now I'm not saying that you're going to do this in one hour and you're going to become a perfect TIG welder. You have to practice. But keep using these techniques, learn how to control your heat, learn how to dip properly, and you're going to become a great TIG welder. If you like this video, please like it, subscribe, follow us on Instagram at Warfighter Fabrication, follow us on our Facebook page, leave comments, and if you'd like to see any specific videos, let us know. Thanks for watching. Next week we'll do a video on how to weld tubing. Derp, not a <laughs> If you like this video, please like it, subscribe, follow us on Twitter at Warfighter.com.